there are still skeptics out there who don't believe there is a connection between football and ALS. What will they learn after seeing this piece? Well, there is a there is a part of the interview that is actually not in the piece, so I might add to it here. When we interviewed Dr. Ann McKee from Boston University, who has studied many of these players' brains after they've died, including Kevin Turner's, and her point is this: America has got to come to grips to this, with this, and if they don't. A lot of people are going to suffer until then. It's not just America. It's within Kevin's own family because his son, Nolan, is a freshman at Clemson, a full scholarship on the football team. They just won a national championship. But how much danger is Nolan in? Dr. McKee would say that she thinks he's in danger. One, because of ALS, there is a genetic connection. Um, it is more likely that he, he might end up getting ALS. It's certainly not a certainty. Um, but as far as just brain damage, she thinks that this guy is, Nolan is, is going to be faced with some serious decisions. If he doesn't get out of the game, and that is a decision unto itself, that life might be more complicated um, for him down the road. How much of a stranglehold does football have on this country? I, I think it's huge. I, I mean, I can remember in the course of shooting with Kevin, when he decided for a season that he didn't want the boys to play football, he was actually concerned about how people in his community, in Alabama, in Birmingham, would react. And he was afraid that some of them would say, oh, this is just a knee-jerk reaction because you're, you're in pain, you're suffering from ALS, you're not looking at the big picture. I think people are afraid to be told you know, they, they actually don't want to hear from the Kevin Turners or the Troy Aikmans or the Bo Jacksons who are saying, uh-uh, not for me. And if I knew what I knew then, you know, if I knew now, um, what I know now, if I knew it then, I, I, I wouldn't have done it. So what impact do you hope that this piece has? And by telling Kevin's story and now even the conflicts that Nolan and his family are dealing with in terms of their love and sort of regret about football. You know, it's one of those things that I think we wrestle with in, in putting together a story like this. I was concerned that we didn't have an agenda uh, and, and we weren't preaching to people and saying, look, take away from this. Um, Kevin, however, it was important for him that his story be told um, and, and that his legacy have something to it with, with some real gravitas. And I think for him that was raising awareness of ALS, raising awareness of the connections between head trauma and ALS, and, and certainly the price that one pays to play this game. And, and I'm afraid that too often the people that go to the games on Sundays and Mondays and almost every other day of the week right now, how would they react if they saw NFL players like Kevin Turner sitting in a wheelchair outside of a stadium as people are going in on a Sunday afternoon? And, and you know, a guy saying, look at me, you cheered for me years ago, but now am I just a forgotten soul? And I think Kevin, Kevin loved the game. He didn't regret playing it. He was conflicted about his own boys playing the game. He wanted to make it safer. He, didn't, he doesn't want to see the game go away. But I think he wants everybody to be fully aware of what some of the consequences potentially are.